Hello everyone. Today we're going to be discussing problems with PS3s that a lot of people don't really know and they wind up spending loads amounts of money on new systems when something simple could be the cause of the, uh, the problem that may or may not have crippled your PS3. So you'll have to forgive me as I do this video right here because I'm going to be moving my laptop which has got my camera attached to it around so that you can see what I'm doing as I'm taking this PS3 apart and explaining to you uh, the causes and uh, easy way to save yourself some money. My first rule if you're a true gamer is you never throw away any old consoles like the PS3 if it had the yellow light of death or if you had a, an Xbox that had the yellow or the red ring of death or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Any of these systems, you save those because inside these, these platforms are what's called a modular design. That means outside of the main motherboard, which is the, the main computer chip that runs across the entire, the, it's the massive one. Um, outside of that, every other piece connected to this is modular. And what I mean by that is the power control unit can come out in one piece. The disk drive can come out in one piece. The fan can come out in one piece. The heat sinks in these, uh, uh, these PS3s that I particular, particularly repair. And sometimes I've even repaired some old junk ones, man. And someone, hey, I'll give you 150 bucks for it. It works great. Oh, here you go. Save yourself however much it costs for a brand new. It's like buying used cars. You know, you put new parts here, new parts there. It's, it's you, sometimes you get someone else's headache, but sometimes you get a good deal and then wind up with something that, that'll last you a few years. So without any further ado, we're going to go and start this process here. So please excuse me while I adjust the camera so that I can record this and uh, make sure everybody can see Alright. Alright. Now, today, this is, of course, I think this is, yeah, this is an 80 gig. Um, a friend of mine, once, I had a PS3 that the disk drive went out in it, or actually the Blu-ray laser burnout. Uh, they're actually a lot like light bulbs in that, in that consideration. And, uh, let's see if I can position this somehow to where it'll overlook. Down, that kind of what I'm doing here. See if I can get it to sit here on the chair. Alright, yeah. Anyways, these PS3 systems are great. I prefer the Fat Boys like this. You know, I got the uh, hard drive door taken off at the moment. Um, but yeah, this, you can tell it's an older one. It's got dust all over it and all kind of craziness. But I've removed the top cover and the way I that this is done is I'll put it back on here and demonstrate for those of you who do not know however this is your warning if you open the PS3 any warranty that you may have had on that PS3 is null and void it no longer counts but underneath right here on the side where it would be sitting upright like this there's a little rubber thing right here uh, right here that you're going to remove let me see if I can get a better shot of this because uh, this is the this is your disk drive slot and then right over here you'll see a hole you see that screw down in there the lighting in my room is really terrible so you're gonna have to like forgive me on that but there's a screw down in there and we're gonna get into this a little bit further so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring my box over here set it down alright and here you go. So you're going to take the top of the PS3 and slide it. If the, if the PS3 is facing towards you in the normal manner, you're going to take the top of the disc and slide it to the left. You'll hear a click once you have, unless you have a star wrench to take the actual bolt out of this over here, you're probably going to have to do what we call pop and crack it, which is you stick a screwdriver inside, pop it, which breaks the tab off that it attaches to, which is right here in this slot this little piece here that I have broken off it is not necessary um, I don't have the tools necessary because I'm disabled and I don't have the money to go spend on special tools to work on my PS3's and also therefore I can't exactly go out and buy brand new PS3's like some people can because unfortunately I have no income and I'm waiting on the government to take care of a problem that I paid into and haven't seen the benefits so now once you get that off uh, you're gonna take I have removed all screws on the top of this thing and there's a piece right here in the, in the corner uh, it's like a little click on the top right corner you're gonna pop that and then just like opening the hood on a car you will open the PS3 up and this is what you will see All right. now 
This is your disk drive, of course. This one is good. I have already replaced this. This come out of an 80 gig. This come out of a separate system. This is your power control unit. This is the piece right here that I'm that I had to replace, which I've already replaced and put and installed. And just to to clarify a few things, if this is your problem, you'll be playing, and then sometimes your PS3 will just shut off for no apparent reason, like it just like you know, and that's it. Um, if that's what it's doing. Also, when it does this, you'll look in the little uh, red, green, and blue lights on the front that indicate disk and power and such like that. It will go off completely. When you turn a PS3 off, one of these 80 gigs, there should be a red light on at all times. If it is not, once again, your power module is mostly, more than likely, no good. So what you have to do is, the first thing is you'll notice that there's some screws here, right here where my finger is, you got a screw here and there's another screw. Now the other screw that was here we've already taken out to remove the the, the, the cover. On the back side you will see where here on the back side of the power control unit there's a plug here which must be unplugged and you just push this tab down and pull it out it'll unplug and then that's the only plug on the back side here that you're going to have to mess with other than down in here there is a couple screws that you're going to have to remove. There's two and they'll be right across from the the local ground. There's a ground right here. This is where the ground lead comes in. And then you got brown and white, which is two different uh, uh, 120 in input. And it comes out the DC direct current. I'm not sure, 12 volts or somewhere around in there. Um, make sure that when you're messing with these that the power switch in the back is turned to the off position. Because what will happen is... These things maintain a certain amount of a charge, and this charge, if you ground across these two, or if you ground across these three uh, power sending wires here that take them to, that it takes it down to the motherboard, uh, you can A, shock yourself, not very nice, or B, you can short the system out simply by touching it with your fingers. Uh, a lot of people know uh, that low voltage computer systems even though there's no power attached to them they, they have a res residual charge that stays to, to keep it certain things like programming and stuff like that same thing as a cell phone if you take the battery out when you put the cell phone back in it, it, it still remembers everything magically uh, well that's kind of how that works and it's the same thing with a PS3 um, once you remove all screws all plugs and do not and I'm going to repeat this dude do not unplug the power control unit on these three wire harness right here from, from the power unit itself. On the inside, the, the pieces that connect to here are very fragile as to where here they're more rugged. So you're going to unplug them from this side of the wiring harness instead of the power sending unit. Uh, one of my clan members, uh, which I'm going to acknowledge and thank you very much for donating this PS3 to me, as mine burned up and I didn't have another one, so out of the graciousness of uh, Mr. Burnett's heart, he sent me his old one and said the disk drive still works and it comes on and everything it just shuts off. So luckily I had an extra one of these and I've got like three or four more disk drives that work put away in certain places. So we're going to put this one in here. This is off my first PS3 that I ever had. This actual console is the one that Burnett sent me and this is off the second PS3 that I had that the lasers went out in and I couldn't refine any replacements. I also have multiple of the motherboards, heat sinks, and I've got like five or six different fans, you know, because all this is module, and it's easy to repair these, and if you send it to Sony Incorporated, you know, if it's, it's something simple like this, they're going to charge you just as if it was replacing the laser or replacing this unit when they're going to charge you an arm and a leg just for shipping and handling, getting it there, fixing it, and then shipping and handling back to you. You have to cover all that. They don't want to do nothing with that. Anyways, I've already replaced this one, but I had a problem when I hooked it back up. Uh, we seem to have somewhere the disk drive is not acknowledging that there's a disk in here, which there is, so I'm just going to simply pull this wiring harness off, like so. It comes right off, comes into a little plug system like so, uh, and we're just going to leave that as is for the moment. The disk drives usually aren't necessarily bolted down. Uh, they're just kind of free-floating. Once you take the main screws off of the cover, you've pretty much freed it up. Now, whenever you remove the disk drive, you must be aware that underneath this disk drive, there's what's called a band wiring harness. It's one of the little wiring harnesses that's flat, it's paper, and it plugs in somewhere. 
you have to be very careful because you don't want to damage that, and you can very easily. So when you lift the disk drive out, you're going to pull it up from the front like so. Make sure you unplug your harness, and then tilt it to the side like this. Do not pull it the other way because, as you see, this wiring harness that's attached to the bottom of the disk drive here, that, that looks like duct tape there, you do not want to damage that or put stress on here. As you see, there's a piece of tape there. Now, I'm going to freeze here for a second. Adjust my camera so you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to take two fingers and I'm going to place them here so that I do not put any undue stress on this band as I'm trying to uh, locate the problem here. But you're going to take this and it's, and it's bent, so you'll take it and invert it like so, and then just simply lay it down. But I'm going to lay it up against the side of my chair here. Because um, I have to remove the power sending unit again to get to where my problem is. I seem to have misplaced my screwdriver. Alright, let me see what I did with it. Yeah, I'm not real good at making videos or nothing, so you have to bear with me. I seem to have lost my screwdriver. Where did it go? Ah, found it. Sweet. Anyway, now, we're going to remove this power sending unit by pulling the screws out of the side here. Like so. We'll just get those out real quick. Alright. And now I'll go ahead and actually completely remove this to demonstrate to y'all how to uh, properly remove this without damaging the unit because simply pulling the screws and unplugging it there's still another connection that has to be uh, dealt with and again here I'm going to show you this is the side that you pull the wiring harness off of the power sending unit from is off the motherboard side grip it firmly with your fingers and slowly rock it back and forth and it will pop out nice and cleanly no, no reason to get forceful if you pull the wires out you're kind of SOL so you got to be ve very careful uh, the wiring harness in the front is the same process. You will simply take a screwdriver, put a screwdriver on the plug like so, push down, and then pull back like so, and it should be free to pull out now. They're a little stiff, especially this one because it's an older unit. And then, of course, this is your your plug that I just removed here. Uh, get rid of that. And then there's a screw right here that we got to deal with get this up but I need both hands in order to do this because my screwdrivers wore out I've done so many of these systems my tools you know you do one system and then your friends like hey my PS3 screwed up can you fix mine and a lot of times I never really have time to fix my own because everybody else has got theirs sitting I've got like five sitting here now that I got to replace um, or work on but again I am not claiming anything that I know what I'm doing because I'm more of a auto mechanic kind of guy versus a PS3 electronic kind of guy but some things are common sense and anything like this is alright next thing you want to do is you can't just pick this up as you see it's still kind of attached there's a plug that sticks up out of the motherboard that's attached right in this area here on the bottom side here and this is where you want to apply the force to remove it because if you pull it from up here you'll bend the prongs and cause damage um, so what we're going to do is right here on the corner there's a little hole here barely stick your screwdriver up under here like so under that bottom right corner or you can grab the unit with your hands and slowly pull up and it will come loose and this is your this is your power control unit very simply done uh, wiring harness is still attached to it because you don't want to mess with that plug and right here you see these little slots right there that's where it plugs into the motherboard right here on these two so when you remove this make sure you're pulling on the edge that this is adjacent to uh, to prevent causing damage now where I think my problem went here is with this flat wiring harness and what I believe has happened is that it has been tweaked and I can see and visually confirm that it is and I'm going to show you how I know this uh, 
Let me see if I can get a better picture. Because like I said, my lighting sucks in here. My videos are poor quality. But at least, you know, I'm trying to save some people some money. Uh, if this turns out to be the pro uh, I got a little bit of a shadow there. Well, anyways, this is your the wire that you see that I'm moving here. This is actually your wireless connection. This is the antenna for the wireless connection. And then the, it runs along this wire and comes to here. This this attachment point for this is very fragile as well. As you see, I can barely touch it and it moves and flexes. I do not want to disturb that. Um, to safely open one of these harnesses to reposition this in its correct place, you must do this very carefully. And I've got to find a tool that I use for this. Um, turns out I don't think I'm going to have it. Um, yep, it's not here. But another way you can safely do this is to grab the the band itself and pull slightly in this direction and then also up like so and it will pop free just like that. On the underside here you can see that I might have a little piece of trash right here or dust that got there when I reassembled it. Uh, so we're just going to get rid of that, like so, yep, nice and clean. Alright, we're going to clean the uh, the area where it plugs into this bar, but there's a little piece that you got to lift up very gently. You don't want to break none of this. Uh, some of you may have fingernails, and that'll that'll greatly help you with this. Just going to kind of blow it out a little bit. Alright, now the reason I left this is because you got to remember, contacts, the gold colored side goes down, like so. So when you plug this harness in, it's hard to do this with one hand and hold the camera because I have no way of stabilizing and doing both. So you're going to make sure that the black bar is up. Oh, let me get you centered here. There we go. And then you're simply going to plug it in, push it up inside of there as far as it will go. And make sure that it's not angled in one direction or another. It needs to be flat up against there. And then with the other finger, while holding this all in place, you're going to close the clamp, the black bar on the top. Now you can see all along this, this blue border here, the space between the black bar and the edge of the blue border are even all the way down. That way, that tells me that this band is all the way up against the back stop of this, this switch here and will not be out of alignment when I put it back together as I did last time. Otherwise I would not be doing this video. <laughs> but now, as for reassembling, we're going to walk through the steps real quick. This is in place. This is done. There's no further need to move or remove the hard or the, the disk drive. So we're simply going to bring it back up and fold this piece over as it should be. It's got a natural fold in it, as you'll see, just kind of replicate that. Do not pull on this. I'm going to hold my finger here while kind of... There we go. Now this thing is back in its original spot, as can be seen, because it the, the leg fits down in that hole there. And you just kind of move it with your finger a little bit, jiggle it around a little bit like that, make sure it's seated properly. And then again, confirm that your band is, is connected and in place, which it is. Everything looks good. Um, my AOS wire is good. I'm just visually confirmed that both of these prongs for your power receiving end of the power unit is not bent and is in good working order. Um, also check that this band connector is also seated well. And now we're simply going to plug back in the uh, disk drive's wiring harness very gently. We're going to plug it back in, like so. Now I have to use two fingers for this. I'm going to set the camera down. And I put one finger on each side of the wiring harness and push down nice and firm. Make sure they're all seated well, which they are. Rechecking my band where I believe that my first problem was encountered. Okay. Now we're going to install the power sending unit. Uh, Got to do my camera here for y'all. Again, these, these prongs are going to line up with this slot on the bottom of the power sending unit. Do not touch 
these two contacts that are inside of here because if there's any residual charge in here, it will shock you. If any of you have ever heard the old stories of old mechanics back in the days before these newer cars had electronic ignitions, you would know what points and condenser are. And there's condensers inside of here and coils. And just like on a car's ignition system, the condensers will store charge. We used to play jokes on each other back in the day where we would lay the condenser up on the motor block and turn the motor over a few times and hit the spark plug to the wire end of it and then simply hand that thing and tell them, here, hold this. And it usually light them up like a Christmas tree. Uh, yeah, I've gotten slapped around quite a few times like that by my nieces and nephews. Uh, it's really funny and it's it's almost harmless, but it's still it doesn't feel very good. It's like getting hit with a taser. Um, now, to install this properly, I'm going to line up and make sure that I'm in a good position with the contacts, which I felt them just seat, and then don't, you know, you got to hold it even, and then back here, where those plugs are, you're going to push down, just like that, boom. It just seated down into its place, everything is connected. The only thing i got to do is plug in the power control unit's uh, AC supply, because it converts AC to DC, and then on out to the rest of the PS3 and then here in the front again we have the wiring harness which plugs into here you could almost do it with one finger like I said you don't want to stress these wires or anything because they're very very small and you don't want to bend any of the contacts that's down in there um, get this worked in there good there we go just plug it in take the wires and actually grab the wires themselves without the harness put your finger on the harness and kind of push down gently and wiggle those back and forth a little bit. That that can the reason you wiggle them is because if there's a piece of dust there that's breaking the contact, if you wiggle it, sometimes it'll move the dust out of the way. And anytime you're dealing with old PS3 systems, when you open them up, they are going to be dusty. I don't care how clean your house is, your PS3 will show you just how dirty it truly is. Because uh, you could live in a spotless house, but there's still dust in the air. Something else to take into account is if you're a smoker. Keep your PS3 out and away from your cigarette smoke or whatever your flavor is. I don't know. I'm just saying. Smoke goes in here and it creates a sticky surface for dust to settle on. And that's not a good thing when you've got electronics because the residue from cigarette smoke and nicotine and all that will carry an electric charge. And once it coats your motherboard, you'll have things arcing to other places and shorten out. And then you don't, you really don't want that. It's a pain in the ass. Um, all right. Last thing. That I got to do as far as installing this is to plug this plug back in, and it is a very simple plug-in procedure. Just yep, it just clicked into place, and right here there's a clamp over top of this wire right here. As you can see, this little piece right here. Make sure your wires are under that because I've had some PS3s when people bring them to me and that wire's pinched, and then they wonder why their PS3 caught on fires because they they you know pinch through the wire and this is alternate current this is 120 volts coming out of your electrical socket it don't go down to the harmless 12 volt that you can touch anytime you want until it comes out the other side of this unit so be careful that's what I'm gonna tell you but it, but again as soon as you break the seals and unscrew the top and take it apart your warranty is void so do not do this until the PS3 s warranty is voided and you're just trying to keep from having to buy another one and you're trying to figure out why it just shuts off or if your disk drive goes bad, you know, you can simply... Now, I'm not sure. I've never done a disk drive transplant yet, but that's coming up in one of my later videos because I have one that needs it. But i got to do some more research and figure stuff out. Uh, because just like computers, I believe... I'm not sure. Don't quote me. But I believe that the disk drives have a driver. And I don't know if they're specific to the PS3 or if I throw this disk drive in another PS3, it has the same exact driver, so it'll work. I'm not sure. But we're going to experiment with that in one of my later videos just to see what we can and cannot do, you know, to keep your old PS3 up and running, man. Because, you know, it is what it is. It's like an old car, man. You gotta, It's got to be maintained. And once your warranty is voided, you can take your PS3 apart. And let me tell you something. The vacuum cleaner is your PS3's best friend. Vacuum out all the dust that you can without actually physically touching the motherboard or nothing. But get, like, all the big dust bunnies... And on the bottom, underneath the disk drive, which I should have showed you all that, is where the heat sinks. Maybe I can. Let me see if I can show you all that. I don't want to unplug nothing. But up underneath your disk drive, up under there, there is heat sinks that have been screwed in. And they have uh, two pieces that come together like a sandwich. And what will happen is the thermal grease in between these two will go bad. And the heat from 
the graphics card up here isn't being transferred to the heat sinks down here that are being cooled by the fan. And that will cause your system to get hot and overheat and then start glitching. And a lot of people, you know, it's just like Skyrim, the game Skyrim. It's real glitchy. It's because that game has so much information that it really, really works your PS3. There's several games out there that are like that. Alright, I'm just going to visually check one last time that all my harnesses and everything are in place. I'm going to push this back down behind this silver band there. Okay, we're all plugged in. Ground wire is in place. Okay, now, uh, let me grab, what did I do with it? There it is. Grab the cover. Now, when, re when reattaching the, the cover, you always start from the front meaning the side where your disk drive and all that go in, this side is to be attached to the front first and then it is to be closed like a car hood. But on the back side there's little tabs that will line up like so. You'll, you'll see that they line up and then you can simply close the lid uh, just like so. It closed nice and cleanly. There's no gaps. It means there was no wires in the way. Um, the next step now of course is to install your screws that come with the system which wait I gotta, let me check something real quick that's why I like to check and recheck all the time because just like right there there is one screw some screws aren't necessary but some actually carry a current down through the next board or motherboard and this is one of those cases because this one does a lot of times I'll leave, you know, if I'm going to be working on a PS3, certain screws, I'll take them out and leave them out on purpose. That way it's quicker for me to access it next time if there's a problem. Uh, usually I'll run four screws in the top, and the rest of the screws I'll get rid of, unless they're, you know, current carrying screws that have to be there in order for the system to work properly. Uh, which, in which case, I would leave them there because, you know, you don't want to... And in here, we have two screws to install. You're only going to install them in the two middle closest holes. This is for the power sending unit. It just holds it in place while you put the lid on and all that. Now, like I said, this power sending unit is about, I don't know, six years old. So I'm really clueless as to if this is even going to work. I have not yet turned on this system. But... I will, I will not cheat you all people of that because you want to know that what I'm telling you is going to work. And, uh, we are going to do that now. Uh, as soon as I get it put back together, I'll hook it up and turn it on and we shall see if, if it in fact, uh, fixed the problem. I also have videos for you later on upcoming to show you how to replace the blu-ray lasers um, that is a very long and tedious process it's going to take some time to do and I just want everybody to be on the same page and understand that you know I'm going to do these videos as soon as I can and as quickly and timely as I can but you know I'm disabled and got some problems that I'm dealing with with social security so my time is very limited uh, just install the screws all across the top like so I usually throw them all in and then just tighten them up later um, all the screws in the top are are long screws except the one marked with the letter S which is the top top corner here right where the screw is going there's a letter S that marks where it goes and that's where you put your shorter screws and then we just tighten it on down that's all that's left do not over tighten around the uh, the disk drive because it will put stress on the disk drive and can cause it to like pinch games you won't get your game back and take it apart and if you take the disk drive itself apart there are springs and stuff in there that will go everywhere if you take the disk drive apart you will ruin it uh, I have made this mistake before and it only took me one time to make that mistake and after that point I don't take disk drives apart anymore and because it's modular as in it comes as one piece there's really no point in taking it apart anyways you can usually uh, open it up and there's a pinhole on the back side of the disk drive that you put a you, know, you bend out a paper clip or something stick it in there and it'll spit the disk out manually like you can manually eject it if it gets stuck um, there is that option there uh, 
get these screws in place and then we will plug in this PS3 and see if it burns my house down. Luckily, when I test these, I use a power strip that I have a very weak breaker in. So if there is a problem, it'll throw that breaker instantly without breaking the or tearing up wiring or catching my house on fire. And it's on its own circuit in my breaker box. So that way I don't have to worry about burning my house down. Alrighty. I'm not even going to put the cover on this thing. I'm just going to plug it in and turn it on and we'll see what happens. Reposition my camera for y'all so that you can see. My PS3 sits right there in between the fan and the TV on that laptop cooling pad. Believe it or not, those things make a difference and I recommend them for any PS3 systems. Uh, buy one and it runs off your USB and believe it or not, it keeps your PS3's running temperature way down. Uh, it will extend the life of the PS3. And uh, give me just a second here while I plug in all my stuff that I use here. Well, there's the piece that I was looking for earlier and couldn't find. All right. Make sure the power switch in the back is turned to the off position before plugging it in, just in case there is a problem. You're not, like, right here in front of it when it goes to arcing and sparking. All right. Plug the power supply in now. Alright, uh, plug in my laptop cooling pad, like so. Alright, this is the time of the trials here. Let's see. Alright, I have a, I have my red light in the corner. Now if your power suiting unit is bad, this red light right here won't stay on like it is now. It will completely just go off and you'll have to reset the switch in the back like three or four times to get it to come back on. So hopefully this power sending unit cured this PS3's problems. So we're going to see what happens. We have success. It, it, it is now acknowledging that there's a disc in there as indicated by the blue light. So that cured the problem. It had a little piece of dust in the wiring harness there that I didn't catch. Um, that's about it. Alrighty.